Hello everyone, Jim Hodges here, Banks here. Banks is 11 month old golden doodle, came in for our residency training program. We worked with his brother a while back and now we're lucky to have him. He's a really good boy, uh, quite honestly. Happy, smart, upbeat, likes to watch you, which you could die for. You want a dog to want to watch you and, and see what's going on so that uh, he wants to be a part of your life and you want to be a part of his, okay? And that just creates that bond that much easier when your dog is watching to see what you want him to do next or if he just wants that interaction, okay? Uh, behaviors a little bit. Of course, we tighten up on obedience. He walked on a leash. He pulled a leash a little bit. We worked on that. This guy's going to do real well. He's just got to have that continuity at home, which is consistency. We don't give a command unless we know he's going to do it or we're going to, willing to make him do it. And we praise everything he does. Remember, we praise 20 times during the day more than we provide the consequence. But consequence is necessary. It's part of the dog's life. Heck, it's part of our life. We just don't have it often enough, okay? And balanced at the same time. You ready, man? Okay, let's go. So let's go with my walking command. See how loose the leash is? My feet up. Good boy. I turn, he's with me. I want him right here beside me. If he started going that way or going in front, I would just tap the leash right back to my side and tell him, no, let's go. If he gets a little bit behind me, uh, if your dog is one of those that pull behind and don't want to go, we would tap him up. But if he's just lagging a little bit behind, we're going to try to encourage him up and not necessarily tap the leash. The tap of the leash is not designed, or it's designed not to intimidate, dominate, break his spirit, hurt him, or have him fear us. It's just to let him know that you need to pick up the pace. This is the way I want you to do it, and you have to do it. Then we're going to praise him. And remember, we're going to praise at least 20 times more during the day than we bite. And that positivity out of our voice and our emotions helps tremendously with that. Let's go. Good. Sit. That's the sit command. I could use the hand signal like this for sit as well. A lot of you may have a different hand signal. It doesn't matter. It's whatever one you can be consistent with. That is that. When I ask him to sit, he holds that sit until I release him. If he did not sit, or if he was to pop up I to sit, I would tap that leash right up above his head and tell him, no, sit. Like in the let's go, I would tap to my side, no, let's go, no, sit. And then once he does it, I'm going to come back and give him a little bit of praise. Not as much as if he did it right the first time, but I want to assure him he's doing the right thing and I'm happy with it, okay? Let's go. Oh. So, sit. Good. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit your head with the leash. Good boy. Good boy. Down. Hand signal for down from the front. We have it from the side as well. I'll show you here in just a second. Down means down. When I ask him to down, he needs to lay down. He needs to do it and not smell the ground and not try to pick stuff off the ground. He doesn't do that, but dogs have been known to do that in the past. If he popped up out of the down or didn't do the down, here's his head, we would just come in and go, no, down, no, down, good boy, okay? Sit, no, sit, good boy, okay? So that was the command from the uh, front. We're gonna do it from the side here again as well. Right. Now you notice I broke him and I actually made exaggerated motion back. That's the get him excited, encouraged. I'm giving him the, uh, the start of the eventual C-O-M-E or here command, okay? But break is a release. That means you're not working, you're free from that command. You still can't pull me on a leash, but uh, you're released. And I'm gonna do it excited. And when I do that excited, in the beginning, I'm gonna have a treat. And uh, when I do that break, I'm going to come in and I'm going to hold my hands right here as a target for it. Remember, this is the, the beginning of the come command as well. And we want our dogs, when they come, to come right here and sit. Break, he doesn't have to sit, okay? But we're break, bringing him here. Atta boy. And that's where his focus is going to be. It's not going to be on the dog down the street or the rabbit or the bird or anything else. We don't hold our hands out here. See how he's looking at my hand? We hold our hands out here, our dog comes here, and all of a sudden he gets a view of something else that he may be gone. Teach the focus here. Time and time and time again. With positivity, your dog wants to perform for you and you're gonna be able to handle just about any situation if you're consistent and work it enough, okay? Let's go. So that was the break. He saw a leaf falling down out of the sky. Sit. Good boy. Down, hand signal from the sides, down, no, 
down. See, he went to smell the ground, I gave him a tap. Now I could go, stay. Now when I tell him stay, he can pack his bags and be there for a while. Now he can smell the ground. Now he can roll on the side, he can chew a bone, he can do something like that. He just has to hold the down. Why do we do a down like this? It's to teach our dog that we're the leader. And down is the most submissive command a dog will do for us, okay? Or for another dog for that matter, but they're just not told to down. So uh, the down stay, I'll typically do that in the beginning, uh, two or three times a week for a month or two, 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. He's done an hour easy. And again, it's a nice thing to have. It teaches our dog where he is and he's fine, okay? I also use that as the precursor for the stay command. Frank, say pretend like we're in a room and this is gonna be hard for him, but pretend like we're in a room and I have to go get something in another part of the house. I'll walk out that door and I'll go stay. And I'll walk out the room and his job is just to stay in that room, okay? If he was to walk through it, I'd grab the leash, no, 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 stay, and immediately go right back out. And now we're teaching our dog to stay in a room while you do whatever you have to do instead of being around you, following you all over the house. Let's go. Good boy. Atta boy, sit. That's such a good boy. Let's go. So another thing that we want to do is teach our dog to load up. He is allowed on furniture. That's perfectly fine. I believe that if we allow our dogs on the furniture, they just need to know when to get off the furniture. So how does that happen with me? I'll usually tell my dogs to get on the furniture and then release them from it. But if you don't care when your dog gets on the furniture, you start to teach a command to get up or to break, to uh, let's go, whatever. But teach them a command to get off, to teach them a command to get off. Okay, so here we are. Look up. That's to teach him to get in the car as well. Good boy. Let's go. And that could have been get off if he was on a couch or a chair. You ready? Play. Atta boy. The place command is lay down, sit down, stand up. Atta boy. Good boy. I don't care what he does as long as he holds the bed. Easily for a couple hours at a time, I can give him a bone or something to chew on. He's got a little leaf on there. I don't care about that. Now where I would have a problem is if he started getting off to try to pick some things up off the ground. We're outdoors, as you can see, the wind is sort of swirling a little bit today. So there's a lot of things that uh, sense in the air, things moving in the air will get a dog's attention. They can't help it. We just want to make sure that we can control the situation. Good boy. One of the things I like to tell people, Frank, is when we teach a dog a command, Dogs learn in environment scenarios, and when the environment changes, a dog reverts back to what they used to do in life before we taught them. So, if, like I did a place from that side, hey, believe it or not, me coming in and doing a place from a different side is a totally different command. We teach our dog to do different commands. It could be a sit with your partner present, it could be a sit in a store where they've been sitting at home all the time, and all of a sudden you get in the store and tell them to sit, they don't know what to do. Can't get mad at them. They just, odds are, last time they were in the store, they weren't obeying sit either. So you've got to teach them that this is the new life with Banks or your dog. Let's go. So the uh, sit. Next command is the heel command. Heel command is a very tight let's go command, okay? And what it is is he's in a box. He cannot read our mind. It's our job to help him stay in that box. His job is to stay in the box. So with hands, hand signals like this, and when we stop, he sits. You ready? Heel. He wasn't looking, but it don't matter. He needs to pay attention. When I stop, he sits, he holds, okay? I always start my heel off by doing a straight path. I always end my heel if I'm making turns, coming out of any turn or curve and walking straight for a few steps, slowing down so my dog can get back into that heel position and sit. Heel, so we turn. Watch what happens when I step off. He's trying to get right back to the box, and I'm gonna wait for him to get in that box before I do anything about it. Good boy. Now, if I wanted to give him a treat then, I could. Didn't want to, I'm still gonna make sure I praise him and make sure I'm very positive with him and everything else when he obeys me. Heel, so now I'm gonna do a 180. We turn around, but now I'm still gonna walk straight out. Good boy, and he has to hold it, okay? Good, let's go. 
that's all it is to the heel. When, everybody asks me, when would they use heel? I use it with my dogs to show off, really. Let's go or tight let's go is all I ever really use 98% of the time out. But if you're at a farmer's market, you're at the pet store that's real tight, get that heel going and have him real close to you. And he's going to know if you practiced it that he's there when you stop, he sits. Okay? The last command is the uh, result of the break command. It's the here for him or come command. Okay? I've got a treat in my hand. I'm going to reward him for it. And what's going to happen is I'm going to ask him to come. And now, different than break, I want him to SIT when he gets to me. I still will take that step back. In the beginning, I may make an exaggerated motion like the break, but right now it's <clears throat> come, he sits, he looks at me, ah, boy, good boy, good boy. So it comes, and again, he holds that sit until I release him. Now, on the come command on leash, if he didn't come, I would have tapped the leash. That's okay, buddy. I'd have tapped the leash towards me and told him, no come. Break. So we start doing that, but we want to get our dogs to do the come off lead. And the best way I tell people to do that is start inside, okay? And, and you can be outside if you're in a fenced-in area. Have a toy, have a treat, and when he's not paying attention to you, you go, hey, thanks, look what I got. Come. Now, what happened? He knew we played this game before on long lines and whatnot. Break. Ah, the boy. He knew what was going to happen there. But when I said, hey, Branks, Banks, I've got the toy or the treat. Did you see? Oh, yeah, I'm going to get paid. And he starts running to me, okay? As he started running to me, what did I say? I actually said, come. I should have said here, okay, uh, for him. So we'll do it again. But uh, when he was committed to coming to me is when I give the command. He gets to me, I pay him off, and then I'm going to release him, okay? Banks, here. Good boy. Sorry about that, friend. But he knows come in here. We work both with him. Let's go. More than me just forgetting sometimes so he can learn. Dogs can learn any commands you want. You just have to be consistent and show them what's happening. But he does that. Now what you want to do is, is once your dog is really reliable on leash you start, and you feel like he's really in tune to you, you go to off leash, ideally inside. That's where you can have a little tab for you, okay? Where if he didn't sit, you could take the leash, have, have the tab on the collar. No, sit. Good boy, okay? The other reason we would have the tab is probably his biggest behavior, he had two behaviors, chewing on things and jumping on people. Yes, we want to practice with the leash in both. Him dragging the leash, we having the leash when you people come in, getting him excited. If he starts to jump, all we do is we bite him and tell him no, okay? Uh, we can do that with the tab, if we have the tab on, or with the leash. If you have neither one on, you go, no, like that, as long as you don't have to worry about your dog going to bite you for that, okay? But you tell him no, hold on, release him, tell him good boy, okay? And you repeat that, and you become very consistent. Just like with my environment uh, scenario change, different people come in, uh, that he's going to possibly react to jumping with different people until he learns that, oh, Mom doesn't want me to jump on anybody. When our dogs have been doing something we don't like and they start to improve, it's important. We've been providing a consequence when they've done wrong. It's important to praise him when he's doing right. When he's laying there being a good boy, when he's being excited running around, you like it. Tell him how good he is. Connect to him with your uh, emotion, positivity. Just let him know. And you can't imagine how much that's going to build uh, your bond together with you being the leader of the pack. This guy's really good, and I think he's going to be a fantastic dog in his family. Good boy. I love the way he watches, and I wish you well with him. If anybody has a question, just uh, email me, pick up the phone, and give me a call. With thanks, Mom, you know I'm here for you. All you got to do is pick up the phone to call. We can do follow-ups. Uh, there's never a charge if you come to me. I want nothing but the best for you and your family, okay? Uh, I appreciate it. I wish the holidays are coming up. I wish everyone a happy holiday out there. And God bless you. Thank you. Bye-bye.